Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I'm Brett Papa, and today I, I'd have to, I'm going to make this as a statement. Of course, it's my own opinion, but mixing major and minor pentatonic is the absolute coolest thing you're ever gonna learn as a soloist on guitar. There, I said it. And if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. <laughs> no, but it's seriously, as a kid, it's like when I would listen to solos, I'm like, where are all those notes coming from? Like, why does Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, Angus Young, Eddie Van Halen, Hendrix, like where are all those other cool things? I'm not hearing that in my, you know, minor pentatonic scale or just strictly major pentatonic scale. There's like something else happening. And it was after I learned, after many painful years of searching, they're just mixing the two scales together. Now, there are some tricks to the trade and they're pretty simple but it takes a while. This is gonna be a process. Your fingers have to get used to possibilities that they might not have ever played before, which is another amazing thing about mixing major and minor pentatonic. The possibilities of the licks you can create are endless. Now I'm gonna show you three different things that I use to mix major and minor pentatonic and to make it much simpler. And I've also released a brand new humongous course on this in the links down below. It's gonna be at a massive discount as an introductory offer, but it really goes in depth over this. It gives you tracks, tabs, scales, the whole nine yards. Plus I shot this course twice and I was like, you know, I, I was almost done with the first version. I'm like, this could be better. And so I shot a whole entirely new course, which I actually do like better, but I'm gonna give them both to you. <laughs> Massive, like 12 hours worth of mixing major and minor pentatonic. And if that doesn't help you get on your way to like mastering your own, you know, experimentation of this two things, and I don't know what else I can do for you. But anyways, so what we need to do is, I think personally, since so many of us are familiar with minor pentatonic, right? Let's take a minor pentatonic. Right, let's just start with that box. Now I'm gonna give you two things in this first video. This is gonna be a three-part series. So this first one is basically just gonna be adding two different notes. We're not even gonna fuse everything all together yet. We're gonna keep it bare bones, super simple. Step one, A minor pentatonic. All we need to do to instantly make this more exciting is just add the major third of our A major chord. So a minor pentatonic obviously has to do with an A minor chord. A major pentatonic is the same scale shapes, but it's in a completely different spot. So to make it simpler, we're just gonna take one note, the major third, which is right here. Right, so now you basically have Okay, now you're like, well, okay, that's great. But when you hear how many times this has been used, you'll automatically understand and be like, oh yeah, I've heard that before. Right? Even the little tweak. That little bend is getting you into that major third sound. And that's why it sounds so cool. So add that, you gotta find that all over the place. And I'll show you three spots. So you got shape one. Right? Well, the most logical and most used transition from that spot is shape two, which is the, that shape, right? So, what we can do is we can add it there as well. Right, here's our minor third in this particular chord shape. Here's our major third. So watch what you can do. Right, so that's already making our, you know, typical minor box sound a little fresh, a little hipper, a little more swagger, right? If you, if you do the little micro bends. Right? 
right? And then add the hammer on into the major third. That's a super cool, super easy way to really add some teeth to what you're doing. Now, if we keep going down that scale, a very commonly used transition from there is going from shape one down to shape five. You hear ZZ Top do this all the time. Okay, so this. would be shape five and minor pentatonic. Well, right here, right, if you just think of the octaves, so you can walk down, or, or, any of those kind of runs will work Great. Okay, so let me play this track. This track is a track from the actual course, but let me show you what you can do. So I want you to concentrate on those triads, those major thirds or the A major chord inside that scale and watch what it'll do to the track. Right, and down here. Right, we're just adding that major third and I threw in the, I, I got ahead of myself. I threw in the next coolest note, but which I'm gonna show you here in just a second. But that's just a really simple way. If I just really slow it down. Killer lick. Right? All I'm really doing is just throwing in that major third, even doing some full arpeggios of the A major chord. Right now, part of that phrasing is also hitting those other important notes. We're gonna get more into that in a minute or in the next lesson or the just two lessons from now. <laughs> but, Hitting chord tones is super important. So I'm also cognizant of the other notes in this particular instance, in this A chord. You know, you got, right, you got your minor third here. You got your root. Right, you got third here, fifth here. So when you're creating licks, which we go to in depth in the course, I give you a whole section on building a lick vocabulary, all based around using the scale shapes, but with the chord in mind, right? So we're gonna play to this track and I'm gonna show you a million different combinations of licks that you can create, all with the idea of how to play to an actual progression because we can mix major and minor and run scales all day long and sound fancy, but if you can't do that, to an actual track and make melodies and music out of it. It's just another kind of parlor trick, right? So the other cool thing I'm gonna drop today is my other favorite note ever. It's called the hangover note. It's the flat five. Because if you just land on that, it's like, oh God, it's almost like a headache note, but. It's instant swagger. It should be the swagger note, right? Because it adds an instant like ear catcher to the phrase. Now, if we add those two things together,
we get lots of potential options. The cool thing about this is once we start adding the major pentatonics inside, which we're gonna do in the next lesson, you're gonna start to get all these three note per string patterns where if you're anything like me and can't do like Bonamassa, Eric Johnson style ripping pentatonic two string, you know, two note per string licks, two string per notes, <laughs> two notes per string licks, then this is really gonna help you with your speed because it's gonna give you a lot more options and a lot cooler options you know, to work with, not that their phrasing isn't cool because they're freaking terrifying. Okay, so. Right, so that note. It's nothing you want to really land on. But when you start using it in conjunction, You get all these other cool options in the walk downs. That Van Halen walk down is just amazing because you start to get a bunch of notes in a row. Right? So if you add that to the track. Could add here in, in shape two, it's right here. Walk down. You get like a cool chromatic walk down, right? So you can use these to also really kind of mess with the timing of your phrasing. You can get cool triplets in there. You can get all sorts of other kind of rhythmic aspects to your playing that are easier to do with three notes in a row than it might be than just playing two notes in a row, right? So other things that you can think about again are extending it right here. So just minor position two would be like this. If you add the flat five, Add the major third. Now, you, when you walk down from position two to one, you can go. So you start to see how the possibilities of all this stuff are literally endless. And that's why the, it's one of my favorite things ever because even if you start to get good with this, it's like the note combinations that you can choose go on forever, right? So it's one of those things that you can always keep your playing sounding fresh. I'm finding stuff, even doing these courses and making videos for this, I'm finding new options that I've never done before that I was like, well, that's cool. But it's just, it's been under my fingers the whole time. I've just never done it until I actually sat down and I'm like, okay, how am I gonna teach? And then you start to realize, oh my God, there's all these other options. So it literally goes on for forever, okay? So one of the other cool things that we can think about is not just doing, you know, typical uh, straight up and down playing. Maybe you can go forward and backwards at the same time. Right? So maybe you're going this way. I'm just adding that note. And notice I'm not starting from a scale note. I'm starting from that flat five. Right, so you can get all the speed with that too. Right, or... That way, if you want a little different approach than that. So there's tons of different ways that you can play those notes. You can also start to add kind of those muted, tough sounding three note per string. 
<laughs> you know who does this really, really good? Richie Sambora of John, of John Bon Jovi. See, that's just, I just slapped Richie in the face because I don't know about you guys, but Bon Jovi just isn't Bon Jovi without Richie Sambora. He, in my mind, when I think of Bon Jovi, it's John and Richie. <laughs> I love you, man. But his phrasing has tons of this in it. He's great at mixing major and minor pentatonic, but doing these runs together to get speed, but still sound like you're in the pentatonic, you know, playing, does it all the time. Sounds great. He doesn't like want a debtor. It doesn't almost every solo, but it's a way to not sound like you're doing three note per string runs and doing pentatonic playing, but getting that three note per string run vibe. It's a really great way to do that. So it's awesome for hard rock, 80s rock kind of phrasing as well. Okay, so in review, minor pentatonic box. Minor pentatonic box with the major third. Minor pentatonic box adding the flat five. That in and of itself will give you endless hours of enjoyment. So remember the. All that kind of stuff. Now again, I go over a whole section of this in the course. I go through all the positions and really show you how to fuse all of these concepts together. I go over how to add the major third, the flat fives. I do this also in major pentatonic. It has that same kind of, you know. So I show you how to do that in major. So I also show you how to use the minor box, inject the major, but also how to play major and inject the minor. So you really can give the audience or the listener or yourself any sort of emotional context that you're wanting to provide in the actual song. You can really play with how you want it to feel because I go over how to make it sound happier and add teeth or how to make it sound, you know, rough and tough and add a little bit of, you know, a little love, a couple flowers in there in the background. Biker bar, maybe a couple flowers in the back. <laughs> but anyways, mess with that. It's super fun. In lesson two, I'm gonna show you how to fuse the scales together, right? So we're gonna take the minor one pentatonic box and we're going to fuse major pentatonic two inside of that. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. Again, all of this is in depth down below in the mixing major and minor course. That's what funds everything here, all the equipment. That's what gets all the guests here. Everything that you see on this channel is all because of your support with the courses down below at brettpapa.com. It's not just me down there. There's a lot of other instructors that are there as well. So my courses are to kind of get you up to speed. And then I bring in other guests to really if you want to go pro and all the way, then we got everything for you there. So you will be a complete creative guitar player. All right. Thank you so much for the continued support. Look out for lesson number two on the way soon. Catch you next time.